One of the real annoyances I've had with uh, the motorcycle, in fact, uh, probably only two things that I can say bad about it are how the cruise control works all around, where the cruise control button is, and that rear brake, that's terrible. Here, I'm gonna solve at least the problem with the button. Um, that button, as you know, you have to reach for it while you hold the throttle so that it doesn't um, lurch, and it's about impossible. Um, I, ha I wear a large glove, so my hands aren't huge or small, and it's, uh, it's so much work to reach over there. And since they don't have an up-down cruise, I end up reaching for it all the time. So my plan here is to switch the wires around between the hazard light on the left and the cruise button. Uh, the hazard lights are rarely needed, and if you do need them, you're not going to be on the throttle. So they really should have just been done that way to begin with. And uh, I looked online, I found that there, there's one person who documented the change, but it was still not super clear. That's why I decided to do this video. Obviously, the first thing to do is take the fairing off, and I won't cover that since it's pretty obvious. But I will mention that you have to be super careful with these screws when you go to put them back in. And maybe even when you're taking them out, one of the dealers told me he's, he's had a couple that uh, backed out while he was removing them. Um, there's a, a brass nut cert that just, just goes into a piece of plastic. And I actually en ended up damaging one. And I put it back in um, with uh, multi-purpose glue. It's a uh, super glue, polyurethane glue combo, and it, it has worked great. It's probably better than stock. So the first thing we're gonna do is separate this connector. Now this connector was zip tied to this one. Um, I already cut the zip tie off so that I could have full access to the connector and the locking tab, which is on the bottom where this was zip tied. So press in the locking tab and then you're gonna have to pull pretty hard on this to make them separate. Next thing we wanna do is take these plastic inserts out so that we'll be able to gain access to the terminals and push the terminals out. Now, if you wanted to, you could just cut the appropriate wires and rewire them and then it's um, kind of a little bit more permanent but what I, I'm going to do is just um, figure out which ones are the right wires to take out take them out and put them back in in a different place so that everything is reversible later on. Now the other connector we're going to need is this four conductor here um, that on this side has two reds a black and a blue. Now one of the problems and one of the reasons I'm making this video is that some of the documentation uh, has changed over the years and you may have different wire colors. So it's pretty critical that uh, you do an actual test with a voltmeter and make sure that you're messing with the correct wires. So again, we're gonna take this apart. Uh, this is the other side switch and we're gonna be swapping wires from this connector to this connector. These things are such a pain to separate the first time you have to separate them. Now, in order to get access to the uh, locking tab that holds these pins in, you'll have to take out these yellow wa uh, weatherproof seals. And I'm gonna do that so that I can release the pins, pull them out and swap them around rather than cutting the wires uh, and making this a permanent solution. But you could also cut the wires if that's what you wanna do. After trying to uh, move these around, I realized that everything in here is kind of wound around each other. So I'm actually going to separate a bunch of the other connectors and just get them out of the way so that I can deal with um, just these, which are pretty tight. Um, and of course, all these connectors are different, so that you can't mess it up. So it's fine to just disconnect them all. Some of these are a real pain, so a little tiny screwdriver uh, will really help. Now for this step, you're either gonna need an assistant to help you press the switch while you hold the test leads on here, or I I'm lucky I have a lot of little uh, test leads, and so I'm just using these uh, tiny test lead extensions to plug in and in theory, the black is one side 
and the blue with a white stripe is the other side. So I've got those hooked up. I've got my meter set on continuity, which should beep, and I should get a beep when I press the button. And there we go. So now we've verified that this is the correct button. Now let's do the same verification on the other connector. On this connector, we're looking for a green with a black stripe and a gray with a black stripe. And they are the ones next to uh, this plugged uh, hole here that has no wire. So uh, after this one, it's the next two wires in theory, and we'll plug in and make sure those are correct. Now, if you were a set of batteries in a meter, when would you die? Yeah, that's right. Right in the middle of a video when you're testing something. And so I panicked thinking, oh no, the colors are wrong and now I'm gonna have to figure this out. It was just that the battery was dead and the meter stopped beeping. So I've got it, I've got it connected here to the two wires, got this on beep mode, and let's try this. And success. That is, actually, that is the correct button. So we're just gonna have to swap those wires and now this very convenient button here will be the cruise control. I don't have a camera that can do a great job of getting in here, but what we're looking to do is take a very tiny uh, flatbed screwdriver and move these plastic locks out of the way. You want to move the lock this way and then push the pin down. So we're going to push it and then get in there either with a tool or fingernail and push out the pin. And it's a little fiddly, but once you get it unlocked, it slides. Um, ow. And they're sharp, by the way. Um, it slides smoothly, though slowly. There's some friction there. And you'll just have to take your time and push it out. Uh, once they're pushed a little bit in, you can push it the rest of the way out with a larger screwdriver and possibly avoid injuring yourself like I did. And this is why there's friction on them. They have these silicone boots so that water can't get in there. And then we're going to do the exact same thing over here and swap the wires as well as we can. Um, probably going to take some cutting of the, the covers here. I'm not concerned with anything here. This is really well protected. If we loosen these wires, nothing's going to happen. So in hopes of avoiding further injury, I've got my lovely assistant here to help push that connector out. Let's try it this way. See if it'll go. It'll go slowly. It'll take quite a bit of pressure and it'll move slowly, so it's not moving. All right, let's try it. I don't know. You got it where you think like you really got it. I I did this big one. It was pretty easy. This one is a real pain in the ass. All right. Yep, great, perfect. All right, so I have to come at it from this side. So when you do this, come at it from the side opposite where the clip is. All right. Great, perfect. Now I've got the fun of trying to separate these out and getting enough slack uh, to bring these together and then be able to plug them back in. Uh, so this one, the wires are already uh, somewhat loose, but this is really tight. So I'm going to take these, which are a fantastic tool to have. Uh, these cut flush and they cut pretty safely because as you push it through something like this, as long as I keep it in contact with this vinyl, it's never going to snag a wire. I'm never going to accidentally cut a piece of wire. Again, you know, get in there and make sure it's up against the plastic. And you probably can't see it on the camera, but you'll see that there's a, an obvious place where the, the cutter is and it's not on a wire. All right, so we've got these loose. And I'm going to cut this off and then we'll put the connectors back together. When you put these back together, the polarity really just does not matter. 
This is just a dead simple switch. It's going to basically put these wires together. That's all it does. So it really just doesn't matter. Um, however, these have a side that locks and a side that does not. And um, what you're going to want to do is make sure that the side that's crimped, that where you can see bare wire and, um, and, it, and it's folded over, that side needs to go towards the clip that locks it in place. And once you push it in there, you'll hear a click. That was super simple. Again, they've got to go in pretty straight and then click and they're done. And that's it. We've swapped uh, one connector. Now on this one, I managed to do it wrong after I told you how to do it right. And what happens is it just, it stops moving um, and doesn't click obviously. Uh, and it, it's real obvious because if you've got it lined up, it's a very smooth uh, push in there and a solid click. Now we'll get our weatherproof co uh, covers back in here. And again, there's only one way for them to go in and you'll see that there are lines here that line up with these uh, openings. And it's not super critical to get these imperfect because as you push the connect, I mean, they need to go in the right way, but the connectors will push it together if you don't get it all the way in. Make sure you get a good solid click when you push them together. And we're connected. Now I'll get all the other connectors back together and see if we have some success. Now, if we've done this correctly, now the former hazard button should light up the uh, cruise control activated light. And there we are. Awesome. And now obviously this should turn on the hazards. That was easy. Now, since Murphy's Law says that the more you put your project back together, uh, early on before testing, the higher the probability of failure. So I'm going to take it for a spin and a test with the fairing off. Now I've already tested the hazard lights, which are on. I'm sitting on the side of the road. There's a car going by. Turn them off.